Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode. Today we'll just build all the whole process of the authentication that we'll need to make inside our Node.js application. And to do that, we'll use EJS for template engineering, also JSON Web Token to create JSON Web Token. I'll show you later on what is it. Bcrypt to hash our password and of course MongoDB to store our data DB. Okay, without further ado, go inside your Visual Studio Code and inside your Visual Studio Code, you should create a terminal. And inside that terminal, you should write npm init-y. After it's initialized, we'll need to install some dependencies that later on we'll be using. First of all, we'll need npm install express. Also, we'll need nodemon to make our application running whole time and it will be easy for us to make it happen. Also, we'll need bcrypt to crypt our password body parser. Also, we'll use cookie parser, cookie parser. Also, we'll need Cesar to get on well, get on deal with cross origins that will not allow us to create everything correctly. Also EJS and I think uh, we will need also Mongoose. Also we will need, we've got a JSON web token. And the last thing I think validator to validate our password inside our MongoDB schema. Okay, while our packages insist is being installed, we have to move forward. First of all, as always, create index.js file. And inside that index.js file, we'll need few things. First, it will be express and it will require express. The next thing that we'll need to create, to make body parser, body parser equals require const body parser, require body parser. Okay, the next thing that we'll need to create is to create const uh, cookie parser to work with our cookies because right now we'll work with our cookie file to stay our user logged in and we'll need require cookie parser and also we will need csrf equals require csrf to hold with cross origins right there inside our packet json we will need to handle one more thing because we'll need to run our application constantly that our application will never just go down if we wrong something without if, if we write down something wrong our application then can just delete uh, go down to make it happen we'll need to add the script starts and no daemon index.js okay we right now need to create our node.js application and to do that we'll need first of all to initialize app and to make it happen app.listen at port 3000 and console.log running our server is up. up okay we just create our application right now as you know We'll just briefly go through the view engines that you can find in the links below how we are using it. And to use that, we need to set the view engine as a JS. The next thing we need to set views as our folder where we will just handle our dynamical templates in EJS. So views, views, 
So there's three I don't need you. And inside that, we'll need to create main page, the JS. Also, we'll need login page, the JS. And logout page, the JS. Okay. And inside that, we'll create some very simple HTML file. So we can just create an body. I don't know, maybe we'll... It's JS, wow. That's why it does not work. And just need EJS. EJS, okay. Not the JS, I have to rename it correctly. EJS, okay. And last one, also EJS. Okay, and right now everything's work as it should. And right there will be have logged in or teach to you are not logged in. And that's all that we need right now to have over here. Also, we'll later on create our login page and sorry not logout page but sign in page sign in sign in page okay move forward to our index.js so we just go back we got our user engines initialized over here and we need to handle the routes and to handle our routes and requests that we'll send, we'll need to use a lot of things that we'll have to. So first of all, we'll use body parser and it will be URL encoded, extended to false. And with that, we are ready to parse our JSON file that will get inside our application. The next thing that we'll need to is to create the simple route. So for example, right there, request response. And right there will only rest at render. Rest at the render. And it will be the main page. Okay, we can just go back to our local host, reload, go back here, but because we need to npm start. Remember that run, right now we run our application by, by in npm start. In packet.json you can see over here that we are using node daemon. Okay. Wait a second, server is up. Go back here, reload the page. You are logged in and our page and our server is running correctly as it should. Okay. Right now we also need to connect our data DB. So to connect our database, we'll use mongoose for that. Const mongoose equals require mongoose. Okay. And with that in mind, as you can see, when I save it, our server will run automatically. That's what nodemon does. Okay. We'll need to just create our server but we can also do as it should have been done. So we'll just create another folder, another file where we will create that database login to make it happen. And it will be easier for you to work with that. And to create our database, to connect our database, what we'll need, we'll need to export the function that we will connect to database to Mongo. Okay. And with that, we need to go to Mongoose and that connect and right there, we'll just uh, paste the string. And then if the result is okay, then console.log connected, connected. If it's not, then catch error and also not log error. 
Okay. And the last thing, the next thing that we'll have to do, going back to our web browser, go inside our MongoDB. If you don't have account in MongoDB, go create your account and create the free tier of database. Whenever you will be ready, you will have to click create that cluster. And when you create that cluster, you just go to database access, add a new user, we'll use password, we'll add the role as read and write, and we'll create some kind of user. It will provide very easy password just for our case. And then go back to our database. I am on it. Connect. Just wait a second. Mongo for Visual Studio Code. Copy that. Go back to our connect string. And right there, we will just pass, pass our connect string. Okay. We also need to change the password. My password is the same as account. Remember to make it more sophisticated than I do. So whenever we are ready with that, as you can see, we can go with our index.js. So I mean, go back and right there, we'll just get the const db equals require and we'll go to db and that's all because it's in over here. And to make it happen, to make it work, we'll just call it over here. Okay, and we've got our database connected. Whenever you, we've got our database connected, we need to create the Mongo schema. Of course, we should create the folder, for example, we'll call it models, not modules, but models. And inside that, we'll create user model at JS, and over here, we'll use Mongoose as our framework for database. So Mongoose. The next thing that we'll need to create is our validator data that will require to validate our database. Then decrypt. And we require decrypt, decrypt. The next thing and the last will be JWT, I mean JSON Web Token, and we need to get it also. First of all, we need to create schema and to make it more sophisticated for us, we'll create it in that way. So const user schema equals new schema and inside that schema we'll create very simple things first of all we'll be type string and it will be required that we need to create required i forgot about that d over here the next thing will be email and right there we'll check if it's an email if it's not it will be type string the next thing that we'll need to is required it will be true because we need it also you need to, to have the you need to be unique so there is no other mail inside our database also we'll just make it lowercase to make sure that our unique will work correctly and we'll validate validate value and that value will be that what user will pass. And if our validator is not email, so we need, that's why we need that exclamation mark over here. Then we'll just throw new error, error, okay. And if we, it will be provide email address. Okay, and the last thing, not only the last, sorry, but also we'll need to create, provide password. Also we'll make it string. The next thing that we'll need to provide 
not only type string but also we will need to have um, it required as true also we will need min length then it will be nine for example and trim must true do i need min length because as we would like to know we can also row five for example make and our password should have at least five five signs of, of five letters or some kind of numbers whatever you would like to and it's the minimum length and trim to trim all the spaces out there and the last thing will be token and that tokens will be type of the string okay and inside our model we don't have to only create our user model we can create much 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 more but also we need to remember very important thing mongoose that model and will user and will pass user schema const okay and we'll need to mod module that exports and it's equal to user okay right now we are starting to creating our saving the hashing the password so whenever user will hash our password will generate our auth token and also we will create the static function for logging our user and first of all we can work with some methods or some options that is provided with mongoose so inside our user schema we need to create pre is the previously saved the password so in our case it will be previously the with the save so as you can see what method should we use to fire up the thing and it will be save and we'll create async function and we'll pass next okay first of all we need to get the user and it will be this it's more complicated but you have to trust me the user is this in that case because we are getting inside the model that will be sent to our database and before it will be sent the full amount we need to pre-save whatever we would like to do and right now we will check if user is modified password and if it is we need to user that password that will just pass and await as we make decrypt that hash and right there we'll pass hash our user password and we'll for, for example hash it salt of, or numbers it's 10 uh, but i write down 11 and is that all that we'll need to create to hash our bequeath password the next thing that we'll need to use user schema is methods methods and inside that methods will generate of tokens tokens and as a function it will be the method that we can get from our user schema also we'll get the user it will be this this user then we will need to get the token we'll create the token gwt and we'll create that token with jwt that sign we'll need id user.id that to string and of course with that we need also our secret jwt token password jwt jwt password you can write down whenever you would like to 
your string could be like it's up to you the more sophisticated the more hard to guess it's easier and more safe for you so user that token will just pass our token to our user that token whenever our user will save will automatically try to log in we'll just pass that token to our mongodb and await user that save that's why that's where we pass it and we will also return the token and the last thing will be also working with schema and right now we will use static and with static i mean login user will handle our real login user mostly over here to make it clearer inside our actions okay we'll need to get the user and it equals await user that find one and we'll need to create the user if it's the user with that email provided if user provided some email we have to check if that user exists if it's not we need to throw new error and wrong password or user name if it is we need to check password and await decrypt.compare will compare the password that we just passed to the password that user that just got at the user that password so we mean that password over here okay and if check password does not work there is no that password we'll just also make the sign throw like before and right now we are ready to go to create our two main routes i mean we'll just create three but with that in mind we need to remember that right now we'll create the user routes that will allow user to log in and to log out and to make it happen also we'll make routes folder and inside that routes folder we'll create user routes that js and here we'll use something first will be const express equals require express and the next thing we'll need is const router and will also require oh, sorry not will express that router okay and right now we need also our user it's require slash db slash models slash user model and here we are connected and we are ready to make our things first of all to make it login we need to make the route of post and to do this slash login and we'll just pass a sync request response and right there we'll try const user and await if user dot login user we'll just pass and use that static file request that body email and request that body password it's okay if it is we'll need to check the await user that generate of token generate of tokens okay and if everything's work we'll also need catch to catch error so we'll just status for example like 400 send error whatever whatever and right there we'll just make our response as in a, inside the cookie 
that's where we'll start to work with our cookie file. We'll just need token, token, and the last thing, it will be HTTP only to true. Okay, the next thing that we'll need to create is to create our account, router.past, that sign in. Also, we need request and response. And with that, we'll need to create try catch block. And inside that try catch block, we'll get const user and we'll. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you? Okay, const user equal group result body. Then we'll need to const user exist. So we'll check if it's the if that if that user exists. So exist equals await user that find email that is equal to user that email. We'll need to check if that user exists. If it exists, we don't want to create anything. But if it's not existed, so if the user exists, that length equals zero, we would like to create our account. And to make it happen, we create a new user and our name will be user.name. As I remember, we just got our name. Yep. We also make uh, email email and password as user that password and we are ready to make our account await account also we will need I forgot generate a token and after that after that we'll need to await account that save and well to save it we need something like that and whenever our error will be created we'll just return 404 over here the last thing we'll just make our login happen router and we will we will, we will need the logout option and to get our logout option logout we will need to request a response and response will be clear cookie and will clear token and that's all that we'll need to. Okay, we've created our routes and the last thing that we'll need to is to send our routes to module that exports equal router. Okay, so we already created our routes, so I mean create account, login, and logout. Also, we can create the pages for some of them. For example, to create the page for our router, <coughs> sorry, we'll need to create the get route and request response. And we'll write there, just press that render and our login. And the same, our sign in, sign in, it will be request response and we'll respond that render. We'll just make the sign in page. Of course, I need to make a login page over here. Okay, so we are ready to go with our user routes. <coughs> we should go back to our main index.js and inside our index.js we need to use a lot more things. First, we'll need to use cookie parser. Also, we'll need to create and use our const CSRF protection and it will be CSRF as cookie to true. So we'll be ready to protect our routes 
and everything's work should work correctly. And to make it work, we need to use the work CSRF protection right here. And the last thing that we need to create is to authenticate our token. Right now, we've got our token to log in, log out, sign in, whatever we would like to. Also, we'll need to create the middleware for that. So middleware, and inside of middleware, we will create our is of .js. And inside that, if, if is of, we'll need to create JWT require our JSON web token that we'll later on get. And if you don't remember, you have to remember your JSON web token. My JSON web token is inside user model and I will copy it, I will need later on. Okay, and exports that authenticate token and we'll just need request response and next, next. And right there, we'll just make token with request that cookies that token. I will show you later on how we'll just get into that everywhere because that's the important part. That's why we are using middleware over here and cookie parser and cookies. If token equals no, no, come on. If tokens equal null, we'll get the user as null and we'll pass next, so it will go later on. And else, if it is, so we'll create the decoded token and we'll need to, to decode, we need to just uh, JSON web token that will verify. And inside that verify, we'll pass the token that we get over here and our secret key. That's why I said you should copy it over here. Okay, and if decoded token, if we got it, we'll just request that user and decoded token that ID should be right there because we pass it by our ID and request that user it will be null in other case. Also, we'll just move next later on. Okay, we created our is of middleware to check <coughs> our login with the user. So right now, what we'll need to create is to create some kind of usage of our middleware and use the last middleware that we will like, not a last, but almost the least one is, is off. But to get that is off, we need to get it from require and it will be middleware and we'll put is off. And right now I know is off that authenticate token and inside that we will need the two things. Request response and also the next. And right there we'll like get the from locals. We'll use is off to our user and the next last thing will make the locals to use our CSRF token to CSRF token and it will be request that CSRF token okay and the last thing will be next that will pass also when we are using our database to, to our routes we should just get our route so const it's our user route and inside that we will just need to require the routes slash is user and right there we'll also add that use user routes routes in the router it's routes and okay, we created our user, we are using our user, and right now we can go inside our pages. And our page should be inside main.page. And inside our main.page, we need to 
check if the user if the user is authenticated and because we are using that is off everywhere because that index.js that few lines that you've got over here we are able to get our user everywhere we would like to without passing our user inside each of the elements and to make it happen to make it work we will need to create a it will need to only check one thing if that user is off so to make it work we'll just go there sorry we'll need main is over here we'll close others and right there as we are using ejs we'll use if statement if is off that's all oh we need only that if it's not so we'll close it else open it we'll just create over here okay we close it we save it we go back to inside our document setting is off is not working as it should okay we need to get inside our index.js look carefully what we don't create as we as we should create of course okay everything's work as it should everything is correct okay 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 not everything is correct because it's not request is response and right now we should go back and reload and you are not logged in that's what the sign said and also we can create something like logout button over here and to create the logout button over here we will need to get the uh, get the if it's login so we are here and we can have the for example href that will get us to logout and it will set logout also if you are not logged in we will create a trap to then some login or sign in and with that in mind we'll create the mockup here at mockup here sorry mockup here and with that two mockups we are ready to create our form to create to log in our account and to log in and to create that form we'll need to create the form and inside that form we will need action that will pass to our login method it will be passed as you remember we are using post and the last thing will be to create our input input it will be type email we'll pass name as email and we'll make it required also we can create label for it to make it work much more better so it will be also email it will be simpler for us label over here for email and it will be email we can copy that paste change our email to password and the last thing is very important because as you remember we are using something like csrf tuple to make it work we need to pass it 
all the time whenever we pass our data and we we'll can create input it will be hidden so it will be not visible and it will be called the dot csrf and with that we'll pass the value and it will be hard-coded value to our csrf token and we'll pass it and close it okay and close it over here and last thing of course as always we need the button login and inside our button it will be type of the type will be submit okay is the easy part we are created our login <laughs> is our signing okay so i will just copy it to our login page remember the com naming convention because i forgot that i'm in the wrong file and inside inside our login page and inside our signing page also we'll need to create something like that but more sophisticated there will be more actions because we will need also one more thing to add and to add will be the name and with that we will pass the sorry we we, we need that file signing signing as a method <coughs> okay we can go back to our page reload okay we've got login logout but 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 mm -hmm. login signing first of all logout logout okay we need to sign in I cannot get a sign in there is no problem no problemo my friend okay that's why right now you should work and we'll create name uh, name that name that name we'll copy it paste it as email okay we can all name our password will be name one two three we need to change that invalid csrf to token okay something does not work correctly as it also should so we need to go to our index.js where we've got our tokens and inside the <coughs> index.js we need to check if everything work as it should okay so first of all we need to check our csrf cookie work correctly mm -hmm. we are using our csrf protection okay okay we need also to call that method over here that's why our token does not work okay we need to reload name to pass that one two three login we need to check in change to sign in okay inside our routes we need to go after that make a rest that redirect to the main page also whenever you are logged in or something fail but we can go inside our database check if our user sorry sorry not that browse collection check if our user exists our user exists and to check if everything works correctly we need to go back login we need to pass that thing one two three whatever because i passed the wrong password and it cannot be done because cannot send the headers okay we've got login post logged in login page is passed over here okay name 
name one, two, three. Okay, we need to get the new one. We, I just get something back with our login and to check if everything's okay. We are trying to log in our user. First of all, we can check if our user is working. Body that body of email. If we're not getting over here. Okay, login. We'll just pass it over here. M123. Site can be reached. Okay, I think that request response. Mm -hmm. I make another mistake. We'll need to recreate everything's work. Mm, pass that, pass that. Name one, two, three. Name one, two, three. Wherever. Okay. We passed our everything, cannot set headers after they are sent to the clients. Okay, so I guess we need to go deeper here. Whatever, don't write up token word correctly. So things, okay, okay, I got it. We don't return user over here. And it should work. So. We should go to our main page. Oh, we are logged in, of course. We would like to log out, of course. I guess our logout does not redirect us. It's only clear the cookie. Okay. And right now we can log in. Name, write down our password and we are logged in inside our application. And that's how we create working full authentication using JSON Web Token, using Bcrypt and connecting it with EJS and MongoDB as a database. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good day. See you at the next episodes. Bye.